Alright, I wasn't going to shoot this vid till the end of the gig log, but I just realized once I got here that uh, all the cables, I was messing around at home just doing some mixing here and there or whatever, and of all the cables to forget, I forgot the power cable and the USB cable for my BMS4, BMS4, which obviously, if anybody knows, renders it completely useless. So now I get to go back home and get it. But uh, this will be the last video of me talking. I won't actually do an end to the gig log. I'll make this the end, and then if anything interesting happens tonight, it'll be after this. But. Uh, I met up with the lady, the the manager of the the bar. It's called the Patchy Joe's. Right, it's actually right around the corner from my house. And uh, she's my age. She's 24, looking for like I think I mentioned it earlier, a DJ to spin top 40, hip hop, rap, everything like that. To because they normally have a younger crowd on Friday nights to begin with, just to draw them in. And I guess the other DJs that they've had have played crappy music, shitty mashups, stuck in 80s new wave music and wouldn't play songs people requested or didn't have songs people requested. Whereas, I mean, not every DJ is gonna have every song anybody's ever gonna request. There's always that one song that a DJ never has or, you know, that there's always gonna be one, or I should say, there's, only, there's always gonna be one person that's gonna request a song and you're not gonna have it. It's bound to happen. Unless you are on top of things and you got a subscription to a website that gives you a song the day it comes out. Before the public even knows about it. <laughs> Which is actually the way BC is. That guy has so much music it's ridiculous. That's besides the point. So, I, did, I was talking to her or whatever. And the main thing is... The, the manager of Freezone told me the other night. He said, I expect you to have a following and you need to step it up. Like, it's my problem that me being a straight person, DJing at a gay bar, which is fine by me, I could care less. It doesn't matter if you're gay or straight. Everybody's different. They, everybody does their own thing. To me, it's a business. It's money. I'm not going to not work somewhere because of, I guess you'll say, sexual preferences, whatever. And Which makes it really hard for a straight DJ, DJ like myself, NBC, to have a straight following in a gay club. It's not gonna happen. It's almost impossible. They'll get to know you and they'll know the music you play. It might push them away. Because if we play the music they want us to play, which people don't wanna hear. We play absolutely no hip hop at all. Even if it's a hip hop that song that's singing the whole time, it's not rapping, we can't play it. Which turns a lot of people away from there. But uh, that's all besides the point. But with this place, Apache Joe's, she was saying how recently, within the last month, few months, on their Friday nights, they got maybe 10 or 15 people in the bar. They're paying the DJ. They're not going to pay him less, but they'll pay him more if he brings in a crowd. And she said it's just steadily getting worse. So all she really wants from me is to help bring them business, you know, play good music, play music people want to hear, play the songs when they request them, you know, make them come back for more. And, uh, I might as well just turn this into a vlog. I think I got a total, like, eight minutes now. Oh, well. Anyways, um, <laughs> so the first thing I asked her, since it's more of a bar than anything, it's, it's it, they got a big open area where they have tables, because they have a grill in there, which they're going to move out of the way to make it a dance floor for the night. So it's more or less just a bar in general, which works for me. The, the first thing I asked her, I said, are you color friendly? And I don't mean by race. As in, in, in the motorcycle club world, color friendly means a club can go in there, or multiple clubs, I should say, wearing their vests, their patches. If they have a bandana that they, that they use for their colors, that's fine. They don't care. All they care about is the business. And immediately she said yes. And I guess she's been doing some marketing with uh, a thing out here we have called the COC, which is the Confederation of Clubs for Motorcycle Clubs, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Trying to get business in there, you know, for, for bike events and when people do poker runs and stuff like that. 
And as soon as she said that, I said, I'm almost willing to guarantee you I can have 50 to 70 people in here Friday night because I want me to start this Friday. And uh, immediately she, she was like shocked. She didn't know what to say. All, and she said that would be absolutely amazing if I, if I could do that for them, to bring them that kind of business, which is possible. All I have to do is send out one text message, one text message and it's over and done with. And that place will be packed full of people, which is what we're really hoping for, which I already sent that text message. So hopefully this Friday will be a busy, busy night for them. Make me look really good as a DJ. And, and you know, technically it's, that's my following in a way, it's the motorcycle club. Everybody in the motorcycle clubs know who I am, know that I DJ, you know, I'm, I, they call me for their events, whatever, what have you. So in a way, that's my following, aside from weddings, because that's the parties I do the most, unless it's a graduation party or a birthday party or something like that. But, uh, yeah. So, I do have a following. It's just a following that's not gonna go to a gay club. <laughs> which is fine by me but you know and this is off subject again that's one of the things I told him I'm all you know maybe me and BC could have a following if you would change your year old advertising because all their posters in there still say Tuesday night this Thursday night that yada yada Friday Saturday night dance party with DJ Dom and Marcus which isn't close to either of our names that's the old DJ uh, DJ Dominic hasn't been there in uh, almost a year, actually. It's been about eight months, nine months. Marcus hasn't been there since I started on Tuesday and Thursdays, which is been three months or so. And he hasn't been there on a Saturday night since I started DJing there like six months ago. I don't know the exact time frames. If you look at the gig logs, you'll know. <laughs> Four months ago, however long it's been. But point being, they're advertising people that aren't even there, in general. They don't DJ there anymore, they don't do anything there. They don't even come in there. And and that's one of the things that, that hurts them, is they don't do new marketing. Just like they had me start on this Sunday, which I'm probably not gonna post, it was as dead as possible. It was like a regular weeknight. Nobody knew they were having a DJ, they just had me come in to fill in because they weren't having karaoke that night and they were getting rid of karaoke in general on Sunday nights and you know it, it, it made them in a way look bad or not them made me look bad because you know what people were in there didn't dance they were just there to sit there and have a drink the people that came in to watch karaoke and sing karaoke turn around and walked out pretty much I mean I didn't have anybody dancing there until it was getting later there was nobody out there I said you know what screw it whatever I'll play like the top 40 hip-hop which is like, you know, Trey songs, Bottoms Up, some Nicki Minaj stuff, any, any, any hip hop song you hear on the radio that's not vulgar and all that stuff. No old school Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Warren G, shit like that, nothing like that. Just new top 40 stuff you hear on the radio that's hip hop. And it's the second I played it, they started dancing. And that's one of the things they don't realize because they don't want to attract that kind of crowd is that unless you play the music people want to hear, they're not going to come. You know, it's just like old dad fucking movie. If you build it, they will come. I believe it's the Field of Dreams with like Kevin Costner or some shit. If you play the music they want to hear, they will come. They will bring their friends. They will all show up. Everybody. But they won't let us do that. That's why their business is suffering. It's not our problem and yet they're going to put the blame on us. But it's just stuff you gotta deal with. It's drama, it's BS. Working there is a headache. It's hard to do as a DJ. It sucks. Would I turn, give up the money? No, not at all. But, point being, it's stressful trying to DJ there. It's, it really, it puts your skills to the test as a DJ. But I'm actually almost at 10 minutes and I know the limit on YouTube is 10 minutes. So, I'm gonna end this vlog. I'll turn this into a vlog, post it as a vlog, and reshoot the stuff for tonight. So, practice and enjoy.